GMAT sentence correction is a particular area in the GMAT exam that is taken lightly by most students. Well, unless you follow rules and unless you learn to curb your instincts, there are very, very high chances that you're going to make a lot of mistakes in the SC portion of the verbal section. In this video, I'm going to talk about a right approach that you should take when solving any GMAT sentence correction problem. And hopefully, if you practice this approach well, I'm sure your accuracy will automatically improve. My name is Anand Venkatesh and I'm the founder of this company called Mentors Capital. We are a networking, mentorship and test preparation company. And our basic approach is centered around mentorship. I'll tell you more about this in just a little while. But let me get started with our agenda for the day. Uh, we're trying to decode the GMAT sentence correction problem. So first, let's consider a sentence that we can use to illustrate our approach. So you can see a sentence given over here. There's an underlined portion in the main sentence that's rep reproduced in the five options, albeit with a little variation here or there. Uh, pause the video here, try the question yourself, and then come back and watch the solution where I explain the approach that you should be taking. All right, let me start the solution. Well, first and foremost, I recommend you stop looking at the options, right? Start by looking at the main sentence. And, and the first step uh, that you're going to do is try to identify the basic structure of the sentence, right? Now, you'll notice that uh, when I reproduce the, the portion sentence again, I've highlighted a few words in different colors. And, and these are important words for us, right? The uh, first portion of the sentence, though, the one in white, Right. You'll notice that the white uh, portion of the sentence has uh, a you know, group of words, a phrase enclosed in commas. Commas usually are a very, very good clue to identifying something called a modifier that usually acts like a descriptor or an adjective or an adverb. Right. In the sentence, you can see that the portion chief of the United States government's uh, personal agency actually acts as uh, a portion that describes Constance Horner, right? So it acts like a like an adjective, right? And in general, adjectives are descriptive portions in the sentence. They just embellish the main sentence. They don't really change the structure, right? And one of the things that you do on GMAT is when you're looking at structure, you try to simplify it by simply striking off any modifiers. Any modifiers and prepositional phrases you can straight away strike off. But remember, you're only striking it off to sort of simplify the sentence structure, right? Now that I've struck this portion out, let's read the sentence and see what its structure is. Constance Horner has recommended that something happen, right? Now, two things immediately sort of leap out. First, that Constance Horner has recommended that something happen, right? And, and this is the use of a bossy verb. And immediately in the second portion, recommended that is followed by a clause that should contain a verb in its command subjective form, subjunctive form, right? And, and so when you say that he has recommended that, uh, you know, work immediately dis uh, sees, right? Or he's recommended that uh, the pizza be delivered on time, right? So this is the use of the command subjective be delivered, right? It's a very unique form, usually comes with bossy words like request, order, recommend, etc. Uh, obviously, recommend that, not just recommend. Uh, so, so that's one, and and you can immediately identify uh, that you know the the portion, the words included in the, in the box here. Uh, B grounds for right. So, B grounds is the command subject to form of the verb, right? So that sounds fine. And the second thing is, uh, well, well, the sentence also says that something is going to be grounds for something else, right? So if you uh, as a later step, once you've identified the structure, then if you also try and figure out its meaning, then what comes out is that the green portion is trying to tell us that the recommendation is that A, B grounds for B. Yeah. So in a very simplistic form, the meaning is that something must be grounds for something else. Right. What exactly are we talking about here? The use of any dangerous or illegal drug in the five years prior to application. For a job, right? So obviously, again, you have a prepositional phrase which starts with the word in, uh, but 
it simply talks about when was the usage happening, right? In the five years prior to application for a job. Again, acts like a modifier. But essentially, the sentence structure says use of something or something be grounds for something else, right? Be grounds for not hiring an applicant, right? Uh, in terms of meaning, does the cause and the effect, does that make sense? Do they fit in in terms of meaning? Well, can the use of something be grounds for not hiring an applicant? Absolutely. It sounds like a rational argument uh, that somebody is making here, right? So nothing wrong with meaning. Uh, immediately move on to step number three, which is now I start looking at the sentences, at the option choices, uh, and, and, and then identify portions which are, you know, going through minor variations here and there. And that will try to, that will help me identify which of those portions is actually incorrect. So we'll take the sentence again. And this time, when I look at the options, I'll try and look at two or more options in pairs and, and try and see what is the variation. So you can see that I've highlighted portions, some in, in red, some in yellow, and some in green. And, and uh, you know, our uh, splits are identified this way, right? So you'll notice that one variation here is that the use of, right, that is A, right? use of A or B, which is maybe the cause of something else, is replaced in option B with any dangerous drug if used, right? I can, I can, the, the portion again enclosed between commas and option B is also a modifier, right? Uh, so I can again sort of remove that and try to read the entire sentence without that portion. Any dangerous or illegal drug should be grounds for not should be grounds when well, this is not in the subjunctive form right? it should does not feature in the subjunctive form of a verb right so i can eliminate option b that way right if i notice the splits then in option c an applicant's use right instead of use you are just qualifying it as an applicant's use nothing wrong with that so far an applicant's use of again a or b in the five years prior to application for a job be grounds not to hire them, right? And you can see not to hire an applicant has changed and become not to hire them. Is that correct? Well, since we initially said that an applicant's use be grounds for not hiring him would be the correct pronoun to be used. So again, I can eliminate for that reason option C. And in fact, if you look at option D also carefully, uh, an applicant's use of and any dangerous or illegal drug in the five years prior to applying for a job, right? There's a variation here, applying for a job. Uh, but, you know, that's not really uh, a point of concern. The, the real point of concern is that in the late, latter part of the sentence uh, are grounds that they not be higher, right? Again, a problem with it being plural, it should be singular. So option D is also ruled out. And then if you come to option E, for five years prior to applying for a job, here the uh, modifier sort of comes in the front of the sentence. So, so let's read the remaining portion first. An applicant's use of any dangerous or illegal drug, okay, use of qualified as applicants, uh, even by the possessive form and applicants. Uh, so use of any illegal or dangerous drug be grounds for not hiring them. Again, same problem, plural form of the pronoun, which is incorrect, which immediately tells me that, hey, option A must be the right choice. And indeed, this is the correct answer, right? So, so you see that the way that we uh, analyze the problem is first look at the original sentence, identify its structure, right? Then break it down, simplify it slightly to assess and understand its meaning. Uh, any grammatical rules that you're aware of, whether it be about tenses or it be about subject verb agreement, uh, modifier usage, and also parallelism, right? Should immediately be applied or should immediately be at least assessed at that stage. If you find an error, try and see which of the sentences, which of the option choices are modifying that error or correcting that. Uh, and if you don't find an error, then, then go through the remaining option choices and compare them to see the splits. And, and once you find the splits, again, apply rules of grammar as appropriate. Uh, and, and try to identify which portions are incorrect, right? The split approach basically helps you identify which sentences are wrong. 
But first and foremost, remember identifying the meaning of the sentence and the intent of you know what is being communicated should should be priority for you. That's number one. And number two, when you are practicing, I would really encourage all of you to please take time and and assess even the wrong answers in much more detail, uh, as much detail at least as you do with the right choice. Right. So in sentence correction, it's always a good practice to have reasons for eliminating all the four option choices and and have very specific grammatical reasons to do so. However. Uh, if you have any queries, if you have any suggestions on what kind of questions I should be discussing, be sure to let me know. I've given you my email address on the screen. We also can be reached on WhatsApp at the number shown here. Or better still, just visit our website and see what we offer. Right? But I'm not done yet. Right? I'm going to take a quick couple of minutes to tell you about the power of mentorship that we so believe in. Right? Uh, our firm sort of idea, firm belief here is that any applicant right, looking to apply to a university in India uh, or even abroad right, uh, can really make use of uh, uh, the vast you know, network of mentors that we have, right? uh, which means that connecting to a person can help you with shortlisting colleges, finding the right schools that fit your profile, maybe also agree with your aspirations and your dreams in terms of jobs, in terms of roles, in terms of uh, destinations. Uh, they, uh, a good mentor can also help you tear your option choices properly saying, uh, you know, which are more likely based on your profile, GPA, GRE, GMAT score, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and not only, you know, at the pre-application stage, even during the application, a mentor can look at your SOP, look at your essay and probably give you uh, an inkling of, is this sounding impactful enough? Does it resonate with uh, the idea and the, and the general spirit that you're trying to represent and make suggestions accordingly, right? So the belief here is that mentorship can really make a very, very big difference at every stage of your admissions journey. And, and in fact, that's the power that we believe applies to every stage. And these are the three stages that we offer our services for. Uh, first and foremost, test preparation, where then you are preparing for the GRE, GMAT, or the SAT exam. Our expert mentors can really, really work with you at both uh, at a very very interpersonal level and and not just help you solve you know understand the concepts but also understand the test and and you know the strategies that will work for you uh, at a you know later stage we also help you craft the perfect application uh, you know uh, discussions with you on how to write essays how to express your ideas statement of purpose letters of recommendation and even some online assessments and personal interviews and, and obviously, I say that our services are comprehensive because we can start with you right from the stage of application, right from the stage of shortlisting colleges, hearing them, assessing your profile, having suggestions on how to build it maybe in the uh, you know, next few months. And finally, to use all that information to build up a very, very strong application. Okay. So that's what we do. Make sure you check out our website. Check the link below in the description. Uh, and, and by the way, in case you need more practice, then the link in the description will give you, uh, you know, follow that link to access free uh, GMAT sentence correction questions. And, and in fact, much, much more than just that. Uh, and, and hopefully, I, I will also be giving you solutions for each one of them. Right? Thank you. You guys have a great day and wish you the very best of luck.